well. Um, but the factors that actually help sustain is the actual building of that teaching and leadership expertise. As Graham says, with the preconditions in place, you can actually start to ripple out and develop people's capacities around those core priorities of the school. And as Graham also indicated, that often meant starting with the middle level leaders to actually get those people engaged in building the capacity of their professional learning teams and building the capacity of others. Um, the interesting thing is that the schools where had a very strong focus on using their expertise well. They would shift people according to the, the expertise they had. One particular example I recall is a teacher who was an absolute star in relation to early literacy who had been delivering fantastic results, P to 2. And essentially the school said, and now you're moving 3 to 6 because we need that sort of approach to be going there who initially wasn't happy and now of course understands the importance of the role. They were prepared to recruit. Um, Graham didn't let me write poach. I wrote poach in the, <laughs> in the report but we thought perhaps better not given we actually want to encourage networking and kind of collective and collaborative working together. But the truth was they would fill a vacancy and it actually wasn't poach. It was often just identifying as I'm sure lots of people here would do, a young person who might be a young graduate or somebody who's been doing some casual work within the school and looking for the opportunity to, to bring them on board. But that very strong focus on ensuring the expertise is used to the best effect was linked to strong performance management systems of open and honest feedback. And there were instances where some of the schools did get rid of people because in the end they didn't ultimately fit. They structured teaching to ensure all kid, kids could, see, could succeed. They had a pretty, some people might say it's a slightly conservative approach to teaching. All of them insisted on explicit teaching. They still adopted and quite commonly adopted and made as their centrepiece inquiry learning and so on, but built on very strong content knowledge base, very explicit goals and objectives for lessons and probably just as importantly, um, strong assessment regimes. And they, in all cases, supplemented the assessment that is run through the department with lots of commercial assessments that they'd gone out and chosen. Um, I think they had a pretty good view of what constructivism means. I think the notion of constructivism has been unfortunately perverted in a lot of places because people have confused what is a theory of learning for a theory of teaching. These people didn't. They actually did their research and found it. They weren't opposed to innovation. Um, some of them are actually leaders in ICT in particular, um, like St Albans Meadows and others, and you know, who are also in the Catalyst Project and things like that. Um, but they expected to have a pretty strong evidence base and to show that it worked before they said, yep, you can adopt it in any wholesale way. They were all good at using data. I mean, schools in Victoria generally are good at using data. Graham and I are re involved in reviewing the senior schools in the Northern Territory. They haven't got a clue about using data in any real sense. They don't have the data regimes that the Victorian Department has developed over a period of time. Schools here are good at, use it, at, good at using data. What these schools were good at, though, was two things. Firstly, they supplemented the data with more data. And secondly, the discussion about data went deeper and broader. Like, we were in, quite commonly, in staff rooms at recess time, where teachers would sit down with AIM data and be looking at it and discussing it and talking about the implications and stuff. It went very deep. It went to teachers. The data was very widely shared and widely discussed. The culture of sharing and responsibility was, I guess, in a sense you'd almost expect it by the preceding factors, but what they did was they structured it. Their professional learning teams were genuine professional learning teams, not just teams in name. They were teams that had 
actual tasks that had to be agreed with the little level managers and had to link to the plan and objectives of the school. There were actual targets, there were strategies, there were things to be achieved. There was time for people to meet by virtue of changing the other meetings in the place and privileging the professional learning teams. Where possible, people were timetabled to do it together. 